Okay, did you accept? Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Hello, I am Deb Covey Ello, founder of the Drop In CEO brand, and I am so excited you've joined us on another episode of the podcast where week after week I get to bring amazing people onto the show who share their insights with us and possibly even inspire you. And just know I bring these conversations and guests to you because I truly care about the C-suite leader of today and of tomorrow to help you navigate your challenges or even your opportunities with confidence. And this week, oh, this is going to be a delight because I have my good friend, Tatanisha, who is on the show with me today. And she is um, all encompassing. I mean, her expertise in the area of training and development and education of others is outstanding. Her areas of expertise are in food safety and regulatory compliance. She is a leader in the food safety space, always an operations and tell and get everybody to get things together because at the end of the day, she really, really cares about customers and consumers and providing them the best service, the best quality for which I am grateful to have her in my network. So Tatanisha, it is my honor to welcome you onto the show. Thank you so much. It's my honor to be here. Thank you, Deb. Those are beautiful words. I appreciate it. And you are a beautiful person. I mean, to my audience, um, I have the good fortune of actually working with Tatanisha a bit <laughs> and actually many, <laughs> many conversations about life, about politics, about everything. Uh, she is a bundle of energy, but also has strong insights and views about different topics for which I just want to bring them to you and just, if nothing else, have a little bit of fun and you never know what's going to happen she's going to put me on the hot seat as well <laughs> but anyway you know i am going to just start a little bit because this will go a little bit into how we know each other uh and again to my audience this may not be scripted like it normally is but i do want to know tanisha because i don't think we've talked too much about this when i first came uh to be working with you i'm not sure uh what you thought of me to begin with or what was it like later to work with me well, because i, I think it's I important <laughs> it is it is i don't know how much you remember because we hadn't met yet and we had a conversation okay um and uh we spoke together in regards to a position that was opening up and i believe you were the um the ceo or the stand-in for that at that mm -hmm. time so they asked for your you know please speak with this person give us the evaluation uh -huh. is it going to be a good fit and we had a very uh it like inspiring conversation, a very um, detailed conversation. There were several questions. I gave you some of my background. You gave me some of your background. Um, there was some pointers in there as well. But when we concluded, we were like, I feel like you grasp this concept and that you will be a very good fit for this position. <laughs> and as always, I'm very thankful um, for that insight. It was very insightful, I want to say, the conversation that we had. Because um, you had some formalities you had to go to, but go through in regards yeah. to making the evaluation. But it was very connected. I was homed in and we talked about like concise because you did get what I was saying, but we had to kind of bring it back and, and bring it around. Is this what you mean? Yeah. Um, yes, that's what I was trying to say. And it kind of just bloomed from there. So when we actually <laughs> got to have a uh, face-to-face contact, um, it, it continued to blossom from there. Um, I know that, uh, I guess when, if we, we're, I mean, like that's our meeting, but if we <laughs> ask, if you have any other questions in regards to us working together, I have little stories and antidotes for that as well. Well, we'll, we'll pepper those in, but I will just <laughs> yes. remember, I just remember, you know, you were talent that we were looking at for a particular position. And it was one of those things you had just so much positivity, so much I energy. Yeah. And, and, and while you may not have known all the details of the job, I could definitely check the box on 60 to 80% of the requirements. And I absolutely knew you had the capability to learn the rest. And, and, you know, I don't even think you doubt it yourself. You as a, an educator and also a student realize I can learn this. I mean, you've been in so many other positions and over time I can learn it. And I can say you did blossom into that position. So I'm so grateful that you, you moved into that. Thank you. Yes. Um, I, I, with it being that it, there was a technical part that could be taught, yeah. I think that there was a confidence that still said, like you said, with the accumulation of experience, um, kind of bring it on. 
And whatever it is that I am not there with yet, I'm going to inquire further. I'm going to learn it. I have outlets. You made yourself very available for any of that learning. You also had spoke to me about what is the description and keep the open circles and check the boxes, which where you did capture it. And that's, I did follow that for a very long time until I've completely assimilated (laughs) into the particular position, I guess, um, what yeah. what when you already shared what your impression is when meeting and saying yes I could see that it's, it's what sixty to seventy percent that this is yeah. covered covered and that I would grasp whatever else so that is having that behind me too I think was very helpful in regards to um, getting into the positions and and the the joys and the challenges that would come but what makes you different and made it. And again, we're going to move on from this because I I really care about uh, you as well, is the fact that um, compared to some leaders, they don't have the awareness to realize like, hey, there's this external resource that wants to help me or provide me some alternate ways of thinking about things or help me to build my technical skills. Or in your case, you had the technical skills, but you know how to how to message, how to communicate in a way that will have greater impact. You kept asking all the right questions questions whereas <laughs> some people it's like yeah yeah i got this yeah yeah i got this right. and as soon as you walk out the door you know, they don't got that i know i know so you know kudos to you for that in thank your leadership you. thank you I, I think that it's um very important um i mean ask the question you don't know if it's the right one or not but if you have inquire yeah what, what's the, what's the worst yeah, I know, I know. And and I'd love to talk about a particular thing because this is an area where I think a lot of people can learn from this experience that you and I had together and it comes to communication. You are a very articulate communicator. Um, you're a very good technical leader. I remember uh, what you talk about is you like to educate people so that they have a greater understanding and awareness. But you also had some challenges being able to like communicate up and I know that there was a time where you try to communicate one way and leadership didn't listen to you. But over time, you learned a few skills for which leadership had to hear you. And I was just wondering if you could just tell a little bit more about where you were at and what have you learned in terms of communicating to have better impact? Well, I think that's the important part is what you're communicating. Okay. And so you're still yeah. trying to bring something up yeah. that needs to be addressed. So it, it what is the palatability or what is within the realm of your presentation? So yeah. you know what? One of those not old fallbacks, but things that you kind of go to is documentation. Yeah. Document it, write it down, forward it via a source that is um, easy for people to absorb. And it also keeps a record because you did acknowledge yeah. something that it needs to be addressed. Mm-hmm. So it gives it a time and a date yeah. <laughs> as well. And that is very important. Um, you know, they say I, say, I say CYB, but you want to make sure that you are <laughs> address it because it does sometimes it comes back around to say hey six months from now we are addressing this why didn't anyone say anything was like kind of like I did I just want to say that I tried to present some and that's another thing so I think you can bring into the foreground is I don't I don't just present the issue or the problem present some solutions so that it starts some kind of a resolution or maybe a communication or a conversation have a meeting yeah. Bring together the people who are going to um, thinking, a brainstorm, or come to some kind of conclusion because you don't you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what somebody else knows, and their suggestion might be what closes that, um, or at least gives some kind of um, reconciliation to the situation as it is now. As we think about what we can do later. I know. And I remember you, <laughs> you you were working with me. I said, hey, Deb, I got this big meeting that I'm having with this higher up. I said, you know, okay, well, make sure you write, like you said, write it down, Basically. have pictures, have a storyboard or something like that. And I remember <laughs> after the conversation, you came back <laughs> and talked to me and said, Deb, they kept asking me more questions about it. Deb, I, you know, I couldn't answer all of them. Some of it I did. I don't know if they liked it. I, 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 <laughs> I remember you were befuddled here, but I don't know if you remember that conversation and what it might have been a presentation in regards to something that we were um, doing that was introduced. Maybe it was I don't know if it was a relatively around it was um, the plant manager that kept asking you questions about, about the uh, the white belt. 
it, well, it, it was it was something around a part of the food safety initiative where you had an opportunity to say we need to do x we need to do y and what happened is they wound up asking you lots and lots of questions and i remember you coming back and saying deb i said i don't know if i did a good job or not i said what you did was you it delivered the information in a way that they could understand to have a conversation and ask more questions and dig deeper. Sometimes when we're so technically smart and you present to the higher ups, they don't know our language. So then they're just quiet and you say, okay, I guess they got it. And no, they didn't. <laughs> you at least got somebody to talk and ask questions. You remember that? <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I, I, there's so many conversations. <laughs> you could, if it was, uh, I remember it. <laughs> you remember it. Okay. Well, I'm glad that it's, that it, um, and I don't know if it ever, it, um, if I ever spoke to you about it again to say, these are the things that, was there any other things that came up after to say, we've highlighted these things or we decided, decided mm -hmm. to address them. Yeah. Cause that might give me a better recollection, but I also, like you said, so they asked questions. So that means they were actively listening and they wanted to do exactly, something about exactly. anything. Uh, what was the conclusion? And if you didn't hear anything, sometimes no news is good news. And maybe there was some things that were, uh, it was a healthy, 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 healthily, healthy, the effect that happened was yeah. healthy and it made an improvement. So then there was no, you know, that was its conclusion that things got um, addressed. I know. And I think that's what's important. I mean, of course, across the board, they make a lot of different decisions and reasons why they make decisions. Um, just still bring this into the arena of, please take this in consideration about a decision on this. Yeah, you, you, you're you a great communicator. And I just remember that you have just, like you say, continue to blossom. But I, I want to start moving in another direction because I know when we were prepping for this conversation, you said, Deb, I, will, I would love to talk about this and that. And I think there are some actual topics that we should be talking a little bit more about. I know on my podcast, I'll talk to CEOs and tell me about your career journey. And yeah, that's interesting and all. But I also, you brought a, a topic to me that I thought was really interesting. And I'd love to go at it with you and you talk to me about the younger generations and they're only staying in jobs for two years is that a problem or is that our current reality i want to know what you think <laughs> i think that it is a current reality i think you know what i i know i have brought it up i apologize i know i brought it up and we had like preparing like i said and talking about it as i got to thinking about it i think it's a symptom of something else that happened Ooh kind of we're gonna have to just go with it so it is a whole different generation who's looking at it that way and they're putting that out um in their communications but there was a very healthy employee market for a very long time mm -hmm. and i think in that there was a time when it became an employer market yeah. and that's when a lot of disloyalty started to happen and now mm -hmm. we're kind of getting a balance or coming back to an employee market so the combination of the different generation in which you're going to be having coming to the workforce and what happened when it was shifted has created that. Because my grandmother worked for LA County for 37 years. Mm. You're not going to see that anymore. So even if you don't stay, you're not going to, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure there are people who have longevity in regards to where they're at, but mm. it's shifting now. And so some of us are getting, that's the new possibly what's going to be happening but who are what about the people who have been five to seven years are they going to reconsider and maybe make that that jump and then it then so where it was that you stayed somewhere very long what's the new thing that's going to be for the generations to come is that you don't yeah and you know when it's unusual and different they start giving it a a, a name like as if it's something that's wrong and it's broken like you know maybe really? somebody does say stay in a place for like 15 to 20 years and then they are let go at like 50 or 55 they'll throw ageism at it and i said no 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 i said it's not necessarily ageism but companies are looking for quick fixes and improve the bottom line get rid of those higher end salaries but what they're losing vision on <laughs> i know i took the i took the mic from you <laughs> oh, right ahead Go right ahead. <laughs> but what they're losing vision is the 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 value. Short term, yeah, maybe they want to cut costs. But do you think about all that value that you lost with all that experience? I said maybe change your business model and maybe contract these people out. Maybe you don't have as many hours, but you retain that intellectual property. I think business owners, I think industry needs to rethink. 
that relationship with employees and employers. So what if some of the younger generation moves every two years? Think about how much value you're going to get out of that young buck <laughs> in those two it's, years. It's interesting. You're right. There is a, sometimes they do think about that. If I can, um, the, the price point in which somebody else is at, but the experience in which they're going to lose, and they're going to bring somebody else in for a, lo a lower price point. Mm -hmm. And then, but then you have to, they're going to have to start taking into consideration that person that might not stay for very long. Yeah, you know, and I used to look at my kids and my eldest son, um, because I am of a generation, you stick around for a job, three, you five, stick. seven years or what have you. That's Put what in I your saw. Time. That's what Put I in your saw. Time. And then my son was like, oh, 18 months, nine months. Like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, oh, maybe he's creating his own intern internship program. Do a little here, do a little there, <laughs> zigzag up the corporate ladder. But then it's like, oh, that's just what they're doing, but it's okay. That's what they're doing, yes, I yes. Know. And it's gathering experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's gathering uh, knowledge uh, and, and working in different environments. Yeah. I'm sure it's beneficial. When it was, I mean, when I saw the um, message, that message that when I saw it about like shifting, mm -hmm. it was uh, the way it was being stated was you can, you can think about yourself in regards to, promoting yourself so if you're yeah. at the place and they're promoting you every two years then maybe you don't need to but you should be thinking about promoting yourself and if at a two years you can get somewhere else where you're going to increase what amount of um, income do it knowledge wisdom experience that you can then do it you know it's funny i was I have been a manager in the room when we were looking at talent, you know, I had gotten to a certain level and I remember hearing people saying, oh, they, they almost left or they're looking for more money or they're looking for that promotion in less than two years. Who are they? Well, right. well maybe we should look at things different, not look by at time, but maybe the value and responsibility and not say time, time served <laughs> before you can right. actually move up. Because it does, it affects, it trickles. Well, I don't know if it trickles up or down because then you start talking about the resume and somebody is going to inquire with you. Why were you only here for this long? Or why do you have this I much know. of a break in between? So I think it's going to change the, it, it, who knows if there's more and more that are, it's being done more often, it's going to change that whole level of how it's looked at. And, and you know what, I've actually been judged or people have looked at my resume. I was going for some contract work, uh, you know, something that would be 9, 12, 18 months. And they kept saying, Deb, you keep jumping around every six months. What's going on? Well, I was a fractional quality leader here and I was a fractional chief operations officer. I dropped in organizations three to six months, but bam, the impact that I had. But people are still judging people on time versus what goods did you deliver? Got to change. <laughs> and I think that there was in the kind of leading up and how you were speaking in to say like some uh, the longevity or people not doing that or what they end up losing by letting somebody else go mm -hmm. and giving them the capacity to come back in as a consultant and still get that experience or still mm -hmm. have that um, on their radar. Yes, you're not maybe not, maybe it's a part time capacity or when they have an inquiry because they know this person's expertise. So that says. Yes, as your entrepreneur, as you pursue different contracted agreements, you were able to obtain that information, but you were also able to give them the knowledge you needed and you needed to be in several different places, but you also run your own thing. Yeah. So maybe as people, I, I, the environment, we're going to have to keep a, like a finger on the pulse or good observation in what direction it's going. I mean, just, I think just to sum up these last few minutes is employers need to view how they resource the work a little bit different. It might be a little bit transient. Uh, some people, maybe <laughs> core competencies, if you're an R&D facility, yes, you want to keep those people working on the same projects, but those other disciplines, maybe they come and go, you expand, you contract based on your business needs. Uh, and I think businesses just re need to rethink things a little bit. Yes. But I, I want to take you in another direction because I think both sure. of you have um, had experiences about working in not so optimal organizations. I will use the word toxic or not toxic. And sometimes work environments you endure and sometimes you say, I gotta get out of here. So what I'm wondering, and just, cause I have some views on this, when you are in a non-optimal, maybe as bad as a toxic environment, do you stay and try to endure and change or shall you go? I'm just wondering what your thoughts are around that. 
uh, it's <laughs> very interesting because you're right. I have experience in that as well. Yeah. Um, I've seen it on lots of different levels because at some points it's so toxic that it does turn people out without you having to be the one who makes the decision. You're not there anymore. Um, but with it being that you can be in an environment and it may have some toxicity in it. Um, and with that challenge, I can't say what other people could do. I can only say that I had to see where I contributed. It was I a part of the chaos? Was it, oh, um, what, um, am I the change that I want to see? Um, what, what can I do? Because there's only one person within the realm of my control and that's me. So I just took a different way of looking at it and said, okay, well, to this particular environment that I'm going in on a regular basis, and I might possibly wait and see what happens, or I'm here, let me make the changes that I need to make. I love this. <laughs> I don't know. Because well, um, you you drop in in a lot of different places. Ooh. You are, It doesn't take very long for you to recognize if it's toxic or non-toxic. You have a shorter stint there. But if you had to put it in your mind to say, hey, I know why people are staying or leaving. Or if I would stay or leave, how do you make that decision? Okay. So I, this is very cool. I will recognize it very quickly. But I will try to understand the undertow of what what is that that it became a survival mechanism that either people are uh, passive aggressive or show up late or you know people saying things about other people behind the bar i need to understand deeper to your okay. point i don't fall victim to the environment because i know i got to get in and i got to get out and i got to fix something so i acknowledge it but i will try to do my engineer thing what's the root cause of this what was the enabling behavior for this bad behavior and let me be the better person speak from a place of reason speak with a completely different voice and over time people will follow because i am the voice of the reason of reason and not falling into that toxicity now there's a caveat to that it's not sustainable <laughs> <laughs> Well, you get to have conversations with the higher ups as they have put you in place and entrusting you and you come to them and you say, to be frank and honest, this is what I've yeah. seen. Are, do they want to do anything about that stuff that's no, happening? Oh, you want to go there. So let's go there. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I mean, I, well, first of all, this is a, this is a change for me to be able to potentially face confrontation because I hate risk. I hate confrontation. I'll just put it out there, even though I will drop into chaos all the time. All the time. <laughs> I have had to have that conversation about this is what people are seeing either yeah. in your leadership style. This is what they're feeling. And I just need to share that with you. You can take it or leave it, but I need to at least as a leader in your ear or your eyes, say, this is what I'm seeing and feeling. You, the leader can choose or not to hear right. and at least try to make some changes if the buck stops with you, because it does kind of start at the top. People will mirror or respond, react to how so. you are. So I have had that. I have had to actually even be a mediator in order to smooth over a relationship with that higher up. Don't know if I've been able to change the environment, but while I was there, it was better. Okay. And so oh. I, well, I'll circle back to the sustainability. Okay. So is it more sustainable when you do have the challenging conversation as opposed to you're dropped in, you've recognized it, you're addressing it, you see what it is? Um, I, I'm not sure right now, but okay. I believe for the time that I was there, the leader that I was working with for which the environment was a little bit challenging did seek to understand their impact. And I did see evidence of them changing, but that change is hard. I know I have to change myself <laughs> over the years. It is hard. I don't know if it's sustainable, but I bet you someday I'm going to talk to that leader again and I will learn if it isn't. I'm no longer with that particular client, though I love them dearly, but if they call me back, I will find out if it was a sustainable change because again, things roll down and then roll up. Please let yes, I think that we need to start um um having those stories too to yeah. say that because I'm sure I don't like I don't know how much you retouch base for where you're at, but it is you know nobody is you're you're your own 
uh, corporation, but do you reach <laughs> back out and say, yeah. hey, this is the impact that I was able to make, even if we're making big or small or victory is victory and victory to victory. Mm -hmm. Okay, before you say something and before I say something, you might want to make a marker because I need to cough. <laughs> <coughs> I apologize. Let me a little water. Ooh. Sorry, we were going and going, and no, I was like, "Oh, I still have, I have a little <laughs> a little frog in my throat." So I'll restart the questions shortly. Oh, well, did well. I think did, that's why I tried to wait until you had you spoke on it until I spoke on it, but I held in my cough. <laughs> this is going great. So I'm going to get started again. Okay. So. One of the things I thought was really interesting, because I saw this while we were working together, is that you, of course, reported to uh, a manager, and you saw things in what the manager could maybe do better. And I think we might have even talked about it. And I said, yeah, just go in, share your thoughts and ideas. And I know you've got a lot of courage. But I'm just curious, because I wanted to talk about this, because this is a really important leadership point about managing up. Managing up is kind of the thing where you need to influence your boss or maybe suggest to them that they might want to do something different or something new versus sometimes it can have a negative impact. And I'm wondering if you've had any experience where you've had to manage up and did it work or did it go south? Um, probably both. What I'm trying not, try not to focus on, I guess, is when it goes south or when it will maybe... I don't know what kind of results, like you said, we exist in a bubble in some situations and some people kind of don't want to hear about themselves, no matter how you present it, it's still going to be different. I agree. So, you you know, that might like, you have to reel it back in or it might pers dis dissuade you from doing it for a little while. But you like you said, the, um, the courageous part. So what I come to find, I guess, out of those situations where I might not necessarily have specifically mm, remember mm -hmm. that what happened but was not well received when did i address it so if i do have a successful one it's probably a little bit more of a candid conversation because i already have a rapport so it's oh. not the first day that they've stepped into this office and then i'm like i know what we could do better yeah. i know how you can already let them get their feet wet let them get a yeah. perspective let something come up that they say and then if you're actively listening you'll be receptive to know that this is probably that space in the moment to address the fact that, hey, I'm following the chain of command. Hey, I am available. Hey, I was responsible for these things. I And I still am available. Or yeah. what can we do to make it better? And what well, I have seen, you know, I feel or I've seen in the past, or I saw that you've done this, this, and this. Do you entrust this to the available people that you have? Um, or I, or make that Correlation, like oh i know such a if you um if, if work with people's strengths i think that i'm a firm believer that. in that it works better when i work with somebody who does that same thing and i happen to have that opportunity so we really resonated there so when it is trying to manage up use some of the things that you guys already relate to and do it more candidly don't make it a i'm barging into the office and <laughs> This is not okay. And this is how we're going to do it now. You're not telling anybody. You want them to to have a back and forth in a conversation or melt it in their mind and think about it. Yeah, I, I love what you say about that because I think, I, and I know I've been scared in the past, like I want to make a suggestion or a better way and I'll get like anxious, ang anxious about it, write things down on a piece of paper before going in there. But you, you brought up a really important point is that they're people too. And you have to see them as part of humanity as a common ground. And when you see them as just another human, they just have a different set of responsibilities. Correct. Having rapport, that is the greater opportunity. Even if you went into their office, I need to tell them about such and such, but you wound up shooting the breeze for 15 minutes. You know what? That's the greater opportunity. Go back to them tomorrow with your idea. And you right. know what? Oh yeah, Tanisha, come on in. Let's talk. Boom. Let's set up a meeting. Continuous improvement is not a um present the issue like here you documented and here are some of the issues that you've seen and here are some solutions that you're suggesting set up a meeting um i think that uh exactly recognizing that they are people and they have a schedule and they have responsibilities mm -hmm. as well so ask and just like asking questions it still falls within that and but don't be afraid to not to to, to ask 
So you find yourself, you remember we were talking about what makes you, do I stay or do I go? Yeah. Well, you have these frustrations, but you're not thinking of a way to address them. Maybe they do have a solution or maybe they don't know and they need to hear it, but mm-hmm. you're sitting on all this information and you're not pushing past your own uh, comfort zone to address it. So mm-hmm. that's your part that you're playing in it. That's why you're unhappy there. And I'm not saying that there are not things that happen in situations where it's not your fault and that it makes you unhappy. Not everything is to be looked at as, because you can look at it and be like, yeah, I know what the situation is and I know what is having this be a fury. However, if you do have stuff and you're just trying to ask somebody, inquire, how do I present this and manage it up? And then get some, absorb some of that information and and push through that power, push through that uh, comfort zone. And maybe you'll be better on the other end. Oh, I'm not as frustrated as I thought. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I will say 80% of the time when you push through to your point, uh, through a challenging conversation, you do get some progress from it. But I got to ask you a question. This is not on the list, Anisha. <laughs> it isn't. Well, <laughs> ask away. Have you, ever, have you ever mentored anybody? Because again, this is what I do. I look at people. I listen to people. I see you through a different lens. I see you <laughs> as a leader, as a manager. And wise have you ever mentored anybody formally or informally i have um they do have programs i've been mentored several but several people Mm -hmm. and i have mentors and then um the there was a program where you could sign up as a mentee and a mentor but they had far more um mentees than they had um than uh mentors so i didn't have um they wouldn't they you could be both you could get more mentored and get a mentee and they didn't, I um, didn't get the mentorship part. So I was just getting mentored as opposed to being somebody else's, but you had um, sent some information and I was looking over it because we're going to get in, get into what you're involved into actively outside of what you do um, for uh, income <laughs> or what would you do um, as you consider work or a job, but I um, want that to be something that goes on my list. So I currently am a Girl Scout um, and I do Girl Scouting. I'm very interested in that avenue, but that is a kind of a mentorship. Yes. You just have nine to 11 little girls. <laughs> that so, is wait. a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, our, our, or um, yes, they, you know, like depending on how long you've had your troop or been involved, they become young women. And I've had like greatest comments. They brought me to tears before. Like when I go to college, I want to still talk to you. I'm going to, I want to make sure we have contact and I want to communicate with you, which is, you're right. So that is still mentoring, but no, I don't have anybody that I mentor currently. I have it on the, on the list of something to say, I want to add that to what do you do on the outside? Because I saw some of the things you do and one of yours was mentorship. So tell me a little bit about things that you do outside of doing this. Mm. (laughs) I do too much and I've been pulling, pulling back the layers, but you know, yeah, that's the other thing. I love mentorship too. I, um, I'm the immediate past president of women in flavor and fragrance commerce. We have chapters in, uh, Cincinnati, Chicago, and New Jersey. So I was the president this last year, but also head of the, thank you. Thank you. It's a, Wonderful women, lots of energy, lots of ideas. We did some great things, increased membership. But I am also the head of the mentorship committee. committee. So each year we get several women or men, we don't exclude, who wish to be mentors, who then uh, give a presentation about their skills and their interests, and then the mentees watch them. It's almost like a dating service. And <laughs> and then they uh, we match and- them up. And we match them up and we check in over the year. And I've had the good fortune of mentoring three different people and just to see them bloom and blossom and gain confidence. Because I will tell you, confidence is the base of what's holding everybody back. It is not imposter syndrome. It is just the confidence. And you need to pull that out. So that's just one thing I do. Podcasting, you know that. <laughs> and uh, Podcasting, the curling. I curl. I just got done with curling this morning. So thank, thank you for pushing our time a little bit off. I had a shower and everything. But no yeah, 
I am a semi-amateur uh, curler. I've been curling for 15 years, and I got a silver medal in 2017 at Notre Dame University in the Arena Curling uh, National, so I wear that badge of honor. I know I can curl good most of the time. The rest of the time, we're just having fun, and how fast can we get to the bar afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, congrats on this. I that is like you said, semi in the advancement over the time from when I met you. I not to say that you weren't taking it seriously, been doing it for 15 years, but to continue to be involved in hearing more and more strides. Yeah. You do take a lot of who you are. You're I think the authenticity of who you are, um, that's what is why you can be successful or mentor or where you're at. Cause it's not, they're not separate. Yes, we are, here's our life and here's our work, but who you are is what you bring to dropping yeah. in or holding the position or whatever. Um, I And that's why that imposter syndrome, cause I thought about that as well. And mm -hmm. I think that you can guard, stay, be guarded to observe, but then ultimately, Ooh your own authentic self will still show through. If you are working on yourself authentically, who you are, so you don't, you're, you might not be, somebody else might look at it like you're being an imposter. No, I've read and observed this situation and this is why I'll act accordingly. Yeah, no, you bring make up it, a... so you make, they, you, the, the imposter part maybe was like the faking it, but you've made it and you're authentic. You were doing the outside, the, the, where it looked like it was being fake, to do your observation. People don't know you. They don't know your background or where you came from, unless they give themselves an opportunity or you give yourself an opportunity right. for somebody to get to know you. But yes, there are times when it does look like imposter and some people are. And I don't, I'm not to, to downgrade people who have, who are experiencing that because there yeah, are people yeah. who cannot actually be who they are at work. And that's frustrating. And that's negative energy. That's hard that to keep is. the two personas. Because <laughs> there's some hard. people who are, you get to observe people looking like they're doing exactly and being exactly who they want to be every day. And you're not getting that opportunity. So think about what's creating that. Is that coming from higher up? Is that coming from the demise <laughs> of the morale in the situation? This is creating the non-toxic, toxic environment. I could talk about this because I actually... <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's one of those things. And again, it's a little bit of confidence, like letting people see who I am. My hair isn't perfect. I've got a little bit of a space between my teeth. Uh, <laughs> am I going to say the right things? Uh, gee, I don't do Botox. I've got some wrinkles showing up, you know, very concerned about how I look and it, will people respect and hear what I have to say. And I have been in environments where I've been a little bit more stiff and engineering like, and I can't show my persona because who wants to see Deb that's this podcaster when I'm trying to deliver, deliver on technical content to help solve a business issue? However, I will tell you, I'll come home at night and get frustrated because I didn't let my true self true out. Self. And as soon as things started changing at this company that I was with, and they said, Deb, we want you to do a little bit more change management. You communicate really well. We want you to do more of that. It's like, Hoo -hoo, I can be myself right now. Up. Here, I, And it's so interesting because you had asked a question earlier about how we met, but we had started working together because as um, making that decision to say, hey, you've covered 60 to 70%. You're going to learn some, you have some of the technical skills. We're going to add some other things. We went out on the floor <laughs> and yeah. we hadn't gotten to very many rooms quite yet. And you're... It, um, you were like, well, sometimes some things just really get my, get me going, but you never broke a sweat. <laughs> you you know, like <laughs> you're frustrated. You were saying the words and as if you were frustrated or angry about it, but you never um, broke a sweat, broke your stride. We kept going forward, but it was to see that, Hey, you, um, I don't want to say a controlled frustration, but I see what you're saying in regards to having to reel it in for where you're at. <laughs> because people will hire me because they're already in case chaos or crisis. They don't need another flimity jibber person. It's like, Oh my God, this place is so screwed up. No, I got to come in with a calm voice. This is what I see. Do you see the same thing? You know, I have some ideas. We might want to that smooth voice to get people out of the you, chaos, you know? You're like, there's some things, and you were honest about how you were feeling at the time. You just didn't have to show it in a chaotic <laughs> manner. And I just, and it was, it was very, um, I don't want to say pleasant. It was nice. It, it was so good because I'd already been there seeing some of the stuff and it had, so I was like, oh good, this is a safe. It was very safe. Thank because you. I wasn't alone anymore. <laughs>
And to my <laughs> listeners, I didn't pay Tanisha to say that. So <laughs> <laughs> you did not. <laughs> to the well, listeners. You know, I think you and I could talk about a bunch of different things here. And I know I got a zillion questions here, but I think the fact is that um, you we'll have to get, well, I'll have to come back. <laughs> you know, those ratings, let's get those ratings up there. The downloads, we love downloads. If you like Tanisha and Deb Coviello, go at it again about real topics. Real. And yeah, it's just, you know, I think we need to probably talk more about this because these are the things that are really bothering people. Um, and I really enjoy the fact that you and I just kind of went back and forth on these topics. But because you were my guest, uh, would just love to ask if there are any last parting thoughts for our listeners uh, that you want to share before we bring this to a close. That is a very good question. That's unscripted as well. So <laughs> I, like I said, it it is a can be be in the moment. Oh, I love it. Go to yourself. Um, if you want to be able to have that strategic um, navigating, oh, this is a situation that I, sometimes you have to just really find it inside. <laughs> They're not nobody else's responsibility to bring it to you. It's your responsibility to bring it to yourself, um, and that. And try it just try it and see if it makes a difference not being you don't have to subscribe you don't have to be sold subscribe like and subscribe here but absolutely <laughs> you don't have to be sold on it, it, it like i said it's parting words um mm -hmm. and i can only speak out of experience because it's helped tremendously um in some of the areas and where i'm trying to navigate to Tanisha, it has been a pleasure, and I want to thank you for dropping in on the Drop In CEO I podcast. You so much, I, and you as well. So I just want to wish you well, much success, and stay tuned for the next conversation. Take care. All right. Now. <laughs>